Chat. Welcome back. We begin the grand final of Rawas versus Moxie. We still had a bit of the music going on as we transition directly into the game. It is the $1,000 on the line grand final of the cross region matchup, except we still have two players from the same regional. The EU server regional had Rawas Moxie advance to the grand final where they're back in the world final. At least they are representing slightly different regions. Rawas from Saudi Arabia, Moxie from France. A little bit of Middle East versus EU for the world grand final. Which one is going to be able to take this one down? Now, if you've been watching on the stream, you know that this is a classic matchup here on this stream. What a shot from Moxie to start his grand final. Air dribble off the side wall. Reset into the top right corner. But as I was saying, Rawas and Moxie played many a time before. In fact, I think 10 total times before this matchup. I went through on my stream. They might have played on other streams before this. 10 total times. The series scores, like the series wins for these two, is Moxie 6, Rawas 4. Rawas' most recent win coming as the regional final of this fall 5k able to take moxie down but if you look at tournament wins it actually favors rawas the grand finals of next gen the first tournament that they played against each other when they were both under 15 years old rawas was able to win that one then when they met in the grand finals again of the swamp the previous tournament before the 5k moxie won so they were tied 1-1 and then that tie was broken most recently by rawas in this regional for this tournament. So now they meet once again in a grand final. Moxie has the opportunity to tie up the tournament grand final series by getting this win and making it 2-2. But even if he doesn't, he's going to have the series edge overall on Rawas at 6-4. The best Rawas can do is send it to 6-5. But I have a feeling these guys care a bit more about the grand final wins than just the regular show match wins. And look at this dribble from Rawas in the air. These two have advanced their game to have absolutely everything. Once upon a time, both of these players were primarily ground players. I think when Moxie came onto the scene, he was pretty much playing his flick game exclusively and his ground game, and then Rawas was just a huge uh, bounce dribbler and just dribbler in general. His ground game was unstoppable. But as they progress from just being you know, one of the best players to the best players in the world, they have added everything. Both of them more than capable of attacking through the air. And I expect to see absolutely everything here today. Moxie and his flicks against Rawas' shadow defense is something that has been a back and forth, a tale as old as time. I would say that Rawas has had the edge on that, but I don't know if that's fully true. Moxie has started to get a bit readable on where he likes to place those flicks. And Rawas has been able to stop them. We talked actually during a different match about how Moxie found a way through by actually flicking soft. We'll see if that ever comes relevant in this game right now. <laughs> They're just going to attack through the air. <laughs> I mean, it's been all about the ground back and forth between these two in the past. But they're going to change that up. For this grand final, it's going to be all wall-to-air dribbles. And this is an insane reset musty from Moxie. 118 kilometer per hour. He is coming out shooting at the start of this series. It is going to be a best of seven here today. Best of seven. I stress that because most matches played on the channel are five. But in these late tournament stages, we are going to be playing a lot more Rocket League. Moxie has had a bit of a shakier way to this grand final. Of course, losing in the regional to Rawas, but also losing a bit more games. When we talk about Rawas and what he's done in this tournament, he is not dropping games to anybody. So far, he has not lost a best of seven amount of games. He lost two to Moxie in the grand final and then one in the semifinal to Khaled. Other than that, no other losses. Three total losses. Moxie is going to have to more than double the losses that Rawas has had in this entire tournament if he wants to take him down in this best of seven. Also, everybody in the ones game right now, or maybe everybody just in the pro game in general, I don't know, I haven't been looking at more than just ones, is rocking this Fennec with the Carmine Core white decal. 
Oh my goodness, what a save by Rolas. Thought he was own going there for a second. But he actually gets a decent bounce. Moxie to the back wall. And he can't get the double. He got Rolas to miss. Can he continue to break him down? He tries to immediately shoot near post. And it was threatening enough to get Rolas to try and make a save. The in and out save is not going to be enough. Oh, it is! It is going to be enough! Oh my goodness, Rolas, he makes it back. That was such an impressive save. I was disappointed because I wasn't going to get to hype up how good of a save that in and out was because I figured the follow-up was going to go right in. But no, Rawas actually finds a way to keep the follow-up out as well. And I don't know why I doubted him. <laughs> I don't know why I doubted him for one second. I've been watching so many of his games and absolutely nothing gets past him. And yet, I thought he was going to get scored on there. When will I learn? Rawas, this touch too soft. He did have an opening. Moxie going to take down on top of his car. You know he's looking top left. He always does. Rawas maybe trying to pre-jump to prevent that. And Moxie plays the second opportunity, the 50. And this time, it works its way through. 4-4. Four, four, a tie game. Rawas has been the one leading in this game. Can Moxie bring it back? He doesn't want the wall to air dribble. The way he's been attacking through the air, it actually slightly surprises me. Instead, he goes for the goal line 50, and, you know, this is supposed to be the safer option, and Rawas might be missing up. No, he got it. Rawas, I mean, this is supposed to be the safer option, right? Moxie just passed up a wall to air dribble so he could take what should be something that guarantees he doesn't get scored on. A nice air dribble 50 in front of the net, but the thing is, Rawas is turning almost every shot into a goal the other way, and considering how solid Moxie played in the air. I almost feel like next time around, I expect to see him take that wall to air dribble. He hasn't really missed on any of those attempts yet. So why give up on it now? Rawas able to punish Moxie, who might be being overly aggressive or, or turning up his aggression here late in this game, down one. That was always going to be a hard challenge to win, and it does not go in his favor. Rawas up two now. The kickoff battle, of course, always important in 1v1. And Moxie is going to try and wave dash out of the midfield a ton. And I know Rawas isn't really stuck to any one way of kicking off. So I think we'll see a mix from him. Especially if Moxie starts having too much success with that wave dash. He is slowly trying to work Rawas down. He does have a bit of time, but he can't really afford to give up possession here. And he did... He backed off into the corner for just a moment. I think he was trying to play on 20 or so boost. I actually feel like he had to just stick with that. Looking at him at the start of that play, I want to say he had about 25 once he started using the boost to go pick up the 100. And I mean, considering the time left and what he had to do, I think 25 is just going to have to be enough. You just got to find a way. But Moxie, this time, not scoring through the air. First touch wasn't great. Couldn't correct it. So it is going to be Rawas, a game one win. And should we be surprised the way this guy's been playing? He's going to get another one too. 8-4. Four. Forfeit this one. Okay, well, <laughs> I think I think I'm just going to wait the two seconds, Moxie. I think I'm probably just going to wait the two seconds, but... <laughs> GG. Rawas, Moxie. In favor of Rawas in game number one. He is not losing many games. YouTube, your support has been insane. We have made it to $11,000 towards the prize pool. Remember, subscribe and you can push it to the max of 15000 Game number two. They're on the same team. <laughs> oh. Game number two for real. <laughs> there were some troubles with the ping. Rawas all of a sudden was getting 300 ping in the server that was just fine for him before. So we've fixed that issue. We are back. And now it'll be game number two. Rawas Moxie. Rawas looking really solid in the first game. Bit of a breather in between the two games now. So maybe that's good for Moxie. Moxie didn't have any internet issues too. It can be stressful to deal with something like that. But it's all fixed now. Moxie got his tactical timeout. What will he adjust as he tries to figure out somebody who almost no one has figured out? If you have been watching the Pro Drops tournament, then you did see that Daniel was able to find a way to take this unbeatable player down. But in the 5K, 
Pretty much no one has the answer. Moxie. His dribble gets Rawas to miss and then he needs to place it perfect and he does to get his first goal. Rawas was pre-jumping to try and stop that flick. Something that he's done a couple times now. We saw Moxie punish that pre-jump for the flick with the low 50 first. This time he punishes by just not rushing his shot, taking it off the back wall first and then playing a shot while Rawas is slightly out of position. There's that flick from Moxie and he's going to go crossbar down. Having to find creative ways to get past Rawas. He is the kind of guy who will just save this flick if you put it on target. And what needed to happen there is Rawas needed to recognize that that was high. I mean, obviously it's easier to say and easier to see in slow-mo because the ball does slow down right as Moxie just makes that setup. But although I think he did have to follow it up, so maybe not. But either way, Oh, low 50. Everything's working for Moxie now. Looking like the timeout has gone well. Thank you for the prime, by the way. TD haste to the day. Assuming I got that correct. Wave dash kickoff for Moxie. Working to get himself a good possession here. First touch was a bit strong. Takes away a lot of his available angles and... I mean, you just have to be perfect. <laughs> you just have to be perfect with every shot. And if you take something like this, which didn't have a great chance of going in against anybody, it's definitely going to get you scored on when playing against Rawas. Oxy. Chipping the ball high. Was not able to gain possession off that defensive play. Moxie does get to keep it as he goes to his back corner. And he is playing very tentative, very reactionary to Rawas on the other side of the ball. You can see that he's affected a lot by what he's doing. Because Moxie is very jittery as he tries to set up the play. But man, he has just been able to score these past few attempts. Rawas back to the corner. Doesn't get to play from his normal shadow position where he gets to start directly in front of the dribble the whole way. He tries to creep his way out and set it up but doesn't get to the position in time and Moxie flicks past him. Moxie popping this ball up. Not the best spot for him and he is going to be fortunate that Rawas misses that off the post. Still not out of the woods yet. Hasn't really been able to get almost any boost and just a really smart play by Rawas who knows he has that boost advantage and it's always a good idea to force 50s and then trust your follow-up when you have, you know, 100 to work with. Or he didn't have quite 100, but he had much more than Moxie. So he can expect to be faster, especially when Moxie is having to turn back around after shadowing to make his challenge. Just Ross playing the odds there. Very smart 1v1 decision-making there. Rawas now back to the blue half, starting this air dribble. Looking like he could threaten a bump. He thinks about it just a bit too late. He had to commit to it a bit earlier. I don't know if he was trying to hide that that's what he was going to go for, just hadn't decided. But trying to react that late. Look at Rawas pre-jumping that top left corner. I mean, it got him scored on the first couple times. But Rawas is not wanting to see a single one of those 100 kilometer hour flicks into the top left. He's going to stop them early. But... So far, I still think that that battle has favored Moxie because he's been able to just fake and get uh, goal temps other ways. Loss trying to be a bit too safe on this challenge. He doesn't go all in on it. He had enough boost to get up there higher. But he tried to just get his wheels and save as much as possible. And Moxie just makes it up over the top of him. 5-3, wave dash kickoff for Moxie. Not as good as he maybe could have hoped because he does lose it slightly into the orange half, but he's quick to gain control. Rawas is hiding to go back to the corner, and Moxie has to go that fast if he wants to try and score. I mean, the reason why he's going for an absurdly quick double is because anything's slower, and Rawas will just get the save. It's the only way to make sure that 
he has a chance. And now 6-3, the counterattack. Rawas in a position he hasn't been in very often. Having to maybe force a little bit of offense considering the scoreline of the game. He's got a minute 17 to make up three. Wave dash to catch back up to this one. But the ball just blew it a bit too close to the back corner that he didn't feel like there was really any play to be made from there. He decides to back off instead. He's able to save Moxie's flick. And he found himself on the wrong side of the ball. No demo for him as he carries Moxie away. That touch too strong. Moxie is going to be able to intercept it, but patience from Rawas knows that he can just collect it on the goal line. The reset. Can he get the 50? That's the only way he's going to be able to score this. And he gets a decent enough 50 to keep the ball around, but Moxie is going to escape. Escape on zero boost, though. Both these players low. Actually, no, they're not. Rawas has a ton. He just picked up 100 at the midfield. Only Moxie was low. Rawas able to steal that corner. It means Moxie's recovery is just a bit later than he would like. He does a good job of getting up right after getting his 100 to prevent that from going in. And 7-3. Moxie, he killed enough time here. Rawas was not able to find any offense. And you really can't blame him for staying so deep in Moxie's half. The only world in which he had a chance at winning was some miracle happening where he stays on offense. So... 7-3. Moxie has now officially forced Rawas to lose enough games in the entire tournament to lose one best of seven. This will be the fourth game Rawas has lost. Is that a good sign? Going forward for Moxie. I mean, as dominant as Rawas has been playing coming into this one, I would still say it's about as equal as it always has been every time these guys have played. Moxie seems to be very matchup based as well. And he has a fine matchup against Rawas. Game number three. Rawas Maxi. We talked about the times that they've played before. Ten times they've played before. I would not be surprised if of the ten times, seven, I think maybe seven, went to the final game. Either game five or game seven, depending on how long the series was. That might be a slight exaggeration, but I really do think that... That is the case. I think there's only been one sweep in the history of their matchup. Only one sweep. And oh my goodness, Moxie. This is just 190 kilometer per hour. Rawas knows where it's going too. We've talked about this. Rawas knows where it's going, but it doesn't matter. It's just too good. Oh my. I mean, anything other than perfect and Rawas is ready for it, but that is just brutal. <laughs> Somebody in chat says, I save those. No, <laughs> no, you don't. No, no, you absolutely do not. Nobody on earth saves those. That is absolutely filthy. Oh, Moxie, matricing the ball. Need to get some kind of touch. But as I was saying, um, all of these games go the distance. The only sweep ever was, I believe, a sponsored show match, like $250 show match between the two, a best of seven, and for some reason, Rawas just had it that day. Just a 4-0. And uh, other than that, every single matchup been close. Rawas off the back wall. Moxie is just hovering underneath. Outside of Rawas' vision, but he can hear him under there. Moxie was hoping to get a demo. He doesn't connect. Rawas, good speed on that challenge. You know, technically telegraphed because Moxie can see him the whole way. But I think just the way that Rawas has mixed up his defense before goes to show that that kind of speed can surprise Moxie. Somebody who maybe is diving every single time, always challenging. Moxie reacts to that much faster as soon as he sees Rawas go, but the way Rawas moves on defense, it's really hard to get a read on what he's going to do. And I know Johnny's talked about this before. But Rawas used to be all about the shadow. He just wanted to shadow. He wanted to make the goal line save. It made him a bit predictable. But that is not the case anymore. Does a good job of mixing in every sort of defensive strategy to keep the offender guessing. And Moxie, this is something that we actually talked about earlier, if you remember, in game one. On those shadows, one of the things that Moxie likes to do 
is just drop the ball directly behind Rawas with either a very soft flick, or in this case, Moxie didn't even really flick it at all. He just kind of popped it and hoped that the save was going to be awkward. If Rawas can't handle the save with power, there's a chance that the follow-up will favor him. And it's something that he's done to Rawas a ton. This time, Rawas makes the save, though. Gets to the follow-up. So it doesn't work out fully for Moxie. He is on his flick game. He is on a split game. We got worried there at the beginning of the series when both of them were attacking exclusively through the air that we wouldn't see the classic matchup. You know, the ground flicks versus the defense. But we're getting it now. Rawas adding the wave dash kickoff. He is more than capable of matching Moxie there. Oh, wow, he just scored. <laughs> he just scored. Moxie throws this as Rocket League. I was about to talk about how Rawas has been doing this a lot lately, where he just lobs a strong touch on net that he knows won't score, but he really prefers to play off the follow-up of it. And I was just wrong. <laughs> Apparently, he's just scoring. Apparently, you can just lob that shot, and Moxie won't get there. Of course, Moxie felt like he should have. But he's going to immediately make up for that mistake, equalize... Make it 3-3. Three, three. I believe Moxie wave dashed on that kickoff. Rawas did not. Something you're going to see a lot if Rawas can't find a way to handle it. Yeah, there's the perfect counter. It's a late kickoff from Rawas. He's had enough of that wave dash kickoff working. And look at this. Immediate goal for him. Smart play. Will he continue to wave dash? Or sorry, will he continue to... Fake on the, or sorry, delay kickoff on the wave dash. Or really continue to mix it up to make sure Moxie doesn't know what's coming. He just goes for a standard here, and Moxie definitely gets a win. So you have to balance the sacrifice of being unpredictable and using what is, you know, obviously the best counter to what Moxie's doing right now. What a shot! So much power off the bounce. 104 kilometer per hour. Moxie does take a wide swing. He had 100 at the midfield, but then he, you know, what you saw is he used about 8 boost. So obviously, he desperately needs to get another 100. So he goes all the way to the corner to get 100 more. And surprising that that wasn't able to get him his save. <laughs> In reality, maybe Moxie's thinking, I need to take this because after I get the save, I want Rawas to be starved out. I don't want him to be able to pick it up. I, I don't know why he feels like he needs to get another 100. Obviously, it's easy to say, looking back, that that was the wrong thing to prioritize, but will he do it again here? He picked up the midfield 100. This time, he's not going to go grab the back corner 100. Instead, he's going to make the opposite mistake of turning in and diving a bit too deep on a fake challenge, which is really, you know, didn't even go that deep at all. But if you're going to turn towards the play in that spot, you probably have to make a bigger effort on the ball, if not just go and challenge. Ross. Another follow up. Another goal. Matching him on his wave dash. I don't think he got the wave dash, but he single jumped into it with the intent of having the faster recovery, and he got it just because he got pushed to the ground so quickly. And here they are in perfect unison. Talked about how Rawas certainly has the wave dash kickoff as well, and this time he beats him with it. 8 3. Rawas, able to tap that quick into the corner and then just aim for Moxie. Look at the way Rawas is just mixing up every time. Moxie likes his wave dash. He's going to stick to it. Rawas is giving him a different look over and over and over. And it's still been a pretty equal battle. I wouldn't say that Rawas has been necessarily dominating it because he's been mixing it up, but... Still a very clear trend. Moxie, great carry. Different kind of flick than he normally does. But it's going to work all the same. If he had found a way to turn right and flick left from that position and score, I would have been very impressed. But if there's anybody who would have tried to do it, it would have been Moxie. Four goals that Moxie needs. The next 45 seconds, and Rawas is back to his old ways. Slicing and dicing. You love to see it. Rawas used to do this to everybody. Moxie's going to throw the forfeit. 
So we'll count the town the timer down after this replay, but my goodness. The cut, the pop, and then Ramash just hovers behind the ball and makes Moxie miss. So we will pause the game and save the 40 seconds. I think that's really why he's telling me to, to hit forfeit. He just wants to go next game. GG, Ramas, up 2-1, headed to game at number four. Game four. It has been a bit back and forth. I'm not sure any of these games have really gone down to the wire. I want to say Ramas has dominated games one and three, and Moxie had a solid win in game number two. Who's going to take the early lead here? Boxy not able to find the demo, but was pixels away. Ruas has a rolling ball. Not a lot to do with it, but actually really smart play. Sends it to the wall and then knows Moxie's going to try and chase him down. Can he get this 50? Oh, what a great fake. How does Ruas find a way to score this? I mean, this is such a hard angle to play from. We're watching from Moxie's perspective to see what he was thinking here. Yeah, he has no choice but to go up. Such a great play from Ruas. Threatening going that top left corner and then turning back off the ball. And not only is that probably the safer option, because even if Moxie does find a way to get a save, he's there for the, the 50, but it's also just a great fake. And maybe just the best scoring opportunity either way, as well as being the safest. That's kind of 1v1 decision making that you're going to see from Ruas that he is starting to perfect. Missed touch on the back wall, but he's still around to make this save. And Moxie is acting like somebody who has no boost, I tell you that much. Oh, Ruas, oh, he's going to be just fine. I almost feel like I wasn't, I mean, Ruas is probably pretty aware of how much boost Moxie has. I wasn't sure, to be honest, but as soon as I saw him desperately try and wave dashes, it was very clear that he felt he was in trouble. Because I, I think there's a world in which if Moxie or if Ruas didn't have the boost read, which oh, he almost certainly did, but if he didn't, you know, maybe he doesn't immediately shoot, but he definitely does after Moxie's panic dashes show his hand. Moxie wall dashing to see if he can save his 20 boost for the shot that will come later. Ruas can let this bounce on the ground and then take the catch. I didn't go low 50, but Moxie stayed grounded so long that he actually was leaving the top of the net open if Ruas had decided to go there. Moxie not getting otherworldly power on this one, which of course means a Ruas save. These guys are just going to test each other's flicks. Who's got the better turn right, flick left, flick? And I really do think that that's Moxie, pretty much without contest. Ruas doesn't want to get into a back and forth on that specific flick. He doesn't see Ruas behind the ball, but it doesn't matter. Flicks to his favorite spot, and Ruas can't save it. I want to watch and see what Ruas is doing here. Interesting turn. That really surprises me. He jumps, and he turns his car towards the top right of the net from Moxie's perspective. Moxie has never shot there. <laughs> I mean, I don't, want to, I don't want to say never, but I feel like Moxie has never shot there. He always shoots to the top left corner and considering how much these guys have played and how I felt like Ruas had the read on that. Maybe he's just like, this time surely. This time surely Moxie is gonna mix it up and not shoot to the same spot. But Moxie is stuck to what works. He knows he can power the ball to that position and has never given up on it. Ruas actually sneaks it in in a position I wasn't sure he's was gonna be able to. Moxie half flips to be able to pick up a pad and make a save with momentum, but he just went just a little bit too deep into his net. And he's been doing these kind of defensive maneuvers uh, a bit. It reminds me of how he's shadowing as well, where I feel like he's trying to turn wide and then so he can get momentum and make a play on the ball, but he's turning just a bit too much that he's leaving a window open he can't correct for. And same kind of thing happened there on that half up. He just reversed a bit too much. 
so he could have momentum into the save. Oh no, Moxie needed that one. Slamming that off the post. He is going to follow it up. Yeah, he, he needed that. <laughs> I think it's going to be tough if he doesn't score on this possession, considering how well Ruas has been playing. It's essential for the mental game to be able to score on that play. Wave dash kickoff. Matching Rawas though. Able to win it. The recovery on this one to get back and keep possession. Didn't get the boost he wanted, so he's forced to just slam it off the ceiling. He wanted the wall to air dribble after getting the 100, but the 100 didn't spawn. So he will just hand over possession to Moxie. And now Moxie, a carry dribble. Where is he going to go? <laughs> Where is he going to go, chat? Where do you guys think he's going to go? What kind of flick do you think Moxie's going to set up and... What position of the net is he going to be shooting for? <laughs> He's just perfect at it. It just, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. He knows exactly what goes in the net. So, <laughs> yeah, all reliable. Exactly. All reliable is the, exactly the way to say it. Normally, I like to save all reliable for the air dribble bump. But Moxie's all reliable is no doubt that flick. This time, can't really control the bounce early enough to go to it. So he tries to pop it. That's actually a really smooth catch from Ruas. The fake, the flip late. That was a really creative way to score on zero boost. I wasn't sure if there was any way he could make it pass, but he got about as good of an option as he could have hoped for. The downside of what he did, though, was it was very all-in. Trying to jump on low boost and pre-flip to try and score does mean your recovery is going to be pretty late, pretty slow. And Moxie is able to capitalize on that. Moxie, a kickoff goal. I mean, this game was all Rawas. But now, Moxie working his way back. A little bump off the wave dash. Delay kickoff from Rawas. He's had enough of losing to the wave dash. Gets in front of Moxie there, which could have been a problem if Moxie was supersonic. Moxie just slow enough that he only gets bumped, and now Moxie, little camera check. A little where'd you go, Rawas? Because he absolutely did not need to look at him in order to see, you know, if he's going to make the save. It was clear he was not making a save. He just wanted to let him know that he had him good. 34 seconds. Rawas, he tried delaying to beat the wave dash kickoff, and now he's going to match it, and I was about to say that he had not succeeded that moxie had still won it because he pushed it into the corner but moxie dives for a demo in his position that i really didn't think he needed to be that greedy especially considering the score line and now he needs a good kickoff is he gonna be able to control this one the wave dash does go in rawas's favor pretty good power from the backflip flick and rawas is gonna make it to this ball before moxie but the miss that net was open that is going to be one that Rawas wishes he could have back. He was aiming far post. He knew Moxie was close. And if he went too near post, then Moxie would have had a chance at saving it. So he did need to find just the inside of the net on the opposite side of the field. But he can't do it. Moxie ties it up. Game number five. Back and forth, we continue to go. That was probably our closest game yet. In fact, Ravas looking like it was his for the majority of the time before that final minute. Boxy threatening his flick this time, low 50. And the 1v1 game is so much about having a wide variety of attacks, showing what you can do, and then cashing in on what you're forcing the defender to react to. You know, Moxie has shown he can flick top left. And he's shown he can flick it with great precision and great reliability, which means Moxie, I mean, which means Rawas is going to have to jump. He's going to have to start reacting to those plays, and then Moxie's going to cash in by going low 50. And the more you show you can do, the more you're going to see what would otherwise be silly goals. And that one wasn't silly. I mean, you could say anybody who's watched the series knows why Rawas had to pre-jump as high as he did. But you're also going to see tons of easier goals throughout the entirety of a long series 
based on what you can show you can do and, and what defenders are going to have to react to. You know, people were joking around. They mentioned Moxie, a one-trick pony with that flick. I don't think they really meant it. It's a great dribble by Rawas to get his first. But if that were true, if he really was a one-trick pony, that's just so easy to stop in 1v1. You can't make it to the highest level being a one-trick pony because the counter is obvious and can be you know, executed every time. You need to be able to have a wide array. And Moxie definitely does. Although he is trying to test that limit, I'll admit, with his flick. Great save by Rawas. Follow-up is good for him as well. Into the air dribble. Pulling back off the ball. The 50 is off the post and out. Moxie somehow found a way. To keep, it was a good setup from going in. This reset forces Moxie down to the ground. And I don't know if he was originally planning on going for the bump. He might have been just trying you know, your standard air dribble reset play. But as he falls really hard off this ball, he's got to turn it into a bump. There's really no other option. Trying to jump back up into a touch would just have too much power. There's no way to come from the ground all the way up that high and not just launch it over the backboard. So he does just bump chat, does die of cringe, which is just something you're going to have to deal with. When you use bump plays, great flick by Rawas. The backflip flick to pop the ball. Would love to see a reverse camera here from Rawas to rub it in even more. Where'd you go, bud? But instead, Rawas just... Make sure to finish it off. Foxy trying to stay with this play with the last bit of boost he has. He knows he has to finish it off with a demo if he wants to turn it into anything, and he couldn't get him. Heard Rawas behind. I actually thought Rawas was attacking, hearing that flip. He was just faking to see if Moxie panic on defense. Moxie handled it well. This flick is going to be too high. Moxie may be recognizing that early. So backflips out of his attempt to save it. Wall to air dribble. He knows that it's not going to be allowed. Or as he sets up in the corner, he knows Rawas is coming. And he just goes back to what works. Rawas closes the distance. Not going to let him set up anything for free. And then he gets to the ship. Why does he keep turning that way? Am I crazy? Am I crazy, Rawas? I don't know. I'd love to have a conversation with him about him. He just keeps jumping and turning not towards the direction where Moxie always flicks it. I mean, I guess there's been a couple times that he hasn't done it, but I don't know. Feels like it might be worth maybe jumping and angling towards that flick and then trying to backflip out of it if it really doesn't happen. Rawas off the ceiling. He's going to try and get a bump, but a bit too close to the back wall. Moxie can just camp there. If that's in front of the net, and Moxie's forced to jump, then it likely works out. Moxie faking the flick. This time, Rawas, I think he turned in towards the ball. I think this one might have been a bit different. This is more of a bounce dribble setup. But still, Moxie cashing in on his... Great flick game. Ruas launching this past the net. Never stood a chance, and Moxie knew it, so now he's taking control. Low 50, not going to work. Ruas able to force it off the back wall, and he actually escapes out of his net quickly as well, so he has a really good setup. Moxie grabbing the 100 late. Good challenge. Ruas was hoping to low 50 him. Ruas on the back wall. Able to intercept this setup. Moxie didn't have a ton of options. Ruas made sure of it though. A third for him. This game's still close with a minute 10 left to go. Moxie's had a tough time reading when to challenge Ruas. How to shadow from that position as to something he has not figured out. When to challenge, how wide to swing, everything that he seems to be doing, Rawas has the answer for. 
this flick is to Moxie's favorite spot, but this time Rawas is ready for it. Saves it off the post. This air dribble. Killed here on the goal line. Moxie going to take it to his back corner. Rawas challenges immediately. Doesn't want to give him any breathing room. Makes sense as the clock winds down. That one was extra greedy, though. Actually, it's going to work out as Moxie touches this too strong. Can't follow it up for an immediate goal. Nice flip by Rawas to recover onto that wall. Going to be able to get 100 here. Can he turn it into a goal? The setup on net is saved off the backboard. Moxie's not in the best of spots, though. He's trying to bait Moxie out. Look at this shot. Oh, my goodness. Rawas played this just about perfectly. He wanted Moxie to come all the way out so he could pop it over the top of him, but Moxie stayed as patient as possible, playing on zero boost. Tried to reverse once again and couldn't make up for it. As Rawas notices the bottom left is open, tying the game with 14 seconds left to go. Important kickoff here. They're both going to go wave dash. Rawas is going to have this one saved. Moxie actually gets a ton of power on it. Might even be able to counter this. The long shot Rawas is ready for. He's going to boom this into his corner. And Moxie just sends it to the ground. He just handed a free possession over to Rawas. The final play is going to be fairly uncontested. Rawas to the air. He knows he has to keep it up. Oh my goodness, Rawas. He won the 50. It would absolutely have been a goal if it wasn't zero seconds. But it was. So we go to overtime, and Rawas gets it anyways. Look at Rawas coming back in this game. Moxie throwing the LMAO, the wave dash kickoff twice in a row. Rawas wins this one and sends himself to match points. One more game he needs to finish off what would be an amazing run in this fall 5K. Game number six. The fans have gotten what they could possibly hope for so far. But will they get the best possible result, which of course would be a Game 7? Can Moxie force Game 7? The story of Rawas winning in this game, winning another 4-2, and losing what feels like almost no games in the process of winning the entire tournament would certainly be impressive, but nothing's as hype as everything coming down to a single game. Rawas doesn't want that. Up 1-0. As he cuts to score his first goal. These two continue to match each other's wave dash. Moxie now hiding behind the ball. Rawas wanted to challenge it early, but cannot get the ball out of Moxie's control. That is a really tough challenge to make. He knows Moxie doesn't have the ball on top of his car, which means he's going to be well prepared to keep that ball from moving past him. And yet still, Rawash tries to backflip over him. This 50 is much better. He's staring down Moxie to see what he's going to do. Knows that there's not really a chance of him beating him to the ball in the air, so he does wait on the ground to try and make something work. Rawash, quick camera check to see what is Moxie going to do as he collects boost in the corner. He sees that he's going for a demo, so he avoids him with a jump, and now the air dribble. He gets the bump. He finished it off. Oh, my goodness. He just barely held on to this one. This was a scary air dribble bump. When you leave it that far away from the net, you are risking a goal the other way. Easy. And 95 boost for Moxie. He was thinking about that freebie he was about to get, but Rawas does manage to connect with Moxie on the ground and secures it for a second goal. Rawas will make it a third. The power that Moxie cannot match. 23 boost. I mean, he was going to have to pre-jump, but you pre-jump in that position, and you'd be crazy to think Rawas doesn't just low 50 you and score anyways. So Moxie electing to force Rawas to execute, and he does. Moxie reading the early challenge this time. Trying to win the low 50, but Rawas comes out in control. Big lob towards net. Does force Moxie to make a save and fall inside of the net. Using the bit of boost he does have. Try and threaten here on Rawas. Rawas, air dribble, 50. Sent into the corner. Rawas is going to take Moxie out of the play and finish it off. Took him for a ride. And pushed him all the way out to midfield. Nothing Moxie could do to recover to this one.
Moxie. Can he get a bit of momentum here with a kickoff goal? He can. It's been the back and forth at the wave dash. Rawas has had the edge on the wave dash up until that most recent kickoff. Moxie, all the space in the world. What is he gonna do? He's likely gonna take the ball for a ball carry. And Ruas knows that if he lets him get a bit of speed on that carry that he's in trouble. So he just turns and dives the whole field in order to take it away. Moxie just handed that one to Ruas for a free goal. Ruas looking to pull away, try and finish off this series. Another matching wave dash kickoff, and another one in favor of Ruas. Moxie on the zero boost carry, flicking high. He's actually not going to be able to go and match it up there. Ruas actually has the advantage, so Moxie just bails off the ball, goes to pick up a corner, and prepares for the defense. He's going to be forced to play. Ruas now, wall to air dribble, solid setup. Gets the reset. Tries to just go directly at Moxie, who's able to get a save. Without jumping too high. Moxie forces Rawas into net. Can he break him down? These moments are crucial. And it feels like every time Rawas is able to handle them. The win for Moxie gets farther and farther away. The demo the other way. The sixth goal. Rawas. His defensive prowess. Works out for him yet again. Two minutes and the chat is definitely calling GG too early. <laughs> but he is looking good towards the end of this game. Ross undercutting Moxie. Probably was going for a demo, but he'll take the undercut. Is he starting to waste time with two full minutes left? It's looking like he is. He, he's playing very passive. He's not going to make a strong touch until he baits Moxie in. This is such a good way to play your lead. I mean, I was curious that he was doing it this early, but you see Moxie, the changeup of pace kind of throws him off. He, he doesn't really know what to do in terms of closing the distance between him and Rawas. Is Rawas just going to hold on to the ball forever? Do I need to go up there and force a challenge or do I need to stay back? Is, is he going to shoot? You know, it's that kind of confusion that Moxie has it ends up putting him in a spot where that shot just goes over the top of him. If Ross plays his normal pace, I don't think we see Moxie making that mistake. 7-2. Ross trying for another demo on the back wall. Pinch from Moxie. They have been good from him. This one definitely had the power. Did not have the angle. What is Moxie doing right now? I mean, he just handed the goal away. That is not what you want to see if you're a Moxie fan, towards the end of this game, you need to see a pop-off from him. And maybe it was a little bit less clear from his perspective, but watching it from Ruas's, it was obvious that that was going to be an easy goal. Twelve boost for Moxie. Early challenge from Ruas. He's thrown in enough now that Moxie does feel like he needs to flick in order to get Ruas off his back. That ends up giving possession away. Ruas lucky to clip Moxie there as he flips through the ball, making almost no contact. There is the flick! Moxie still has it. And he sets it up so quick. Ruas on zero, never stood a chance on this one. Try to swing wide to get into his position to make you know, an attacking save on the ball. But left the majority of the net open. You're the only player who I literally don't know what to do when you defend. <laughs> That's crazy. You're getting a huge compliment here towards the end of the game from Moxie. I mean, Rawas, he just mixes it up. He throws the thanks and he throws the ninth goal in. Moxie says, I can score against anybody, anybody but you, and I know what to do. It seems like what Moxie's decided to do is just go for that flick over and over. But wow, what a performance. What a tournament 
from Rawas. I think chat is finally a bit correct for smelling the end of the game here. 4-2. Another series between Rawas and Moxie that doesn't technically go the full distance. It was a bit back and forth, but Rawas, one of the most dominant tournament performances in 1v1 history. If you ask me, he has looked so good in this game. He's looked so good in the ones game, period. Only blemish right now comes from a different tournament against Daniel, but my goodness, Rawas. He brings the series between him and Moxie to six to five. Moxie still has the edge, but tournament wins now. Rawas has next gen, the 5K regional, and the 5K world final, whereas Moxie just has the swamp. What a battle between these two.